So after the workout today, I checked the memory card, just see that I got everything. And for some reason, I didn't record the intro. Like the whole way when I drove here, I was literally sitting here talking and it wasn't recording. Like it's super hard to see on the screen, it's just like a small dot that's showing if it's recording or not. And I don't know, I, for some reason I missed it. But we all make mistakes, we live, we learn. So I'm just gonna do a quick intro now and basically tell you what the plan is. So today is a pull workout and a um, deload workout as well. So this whole week is a deload. Last day we did a uh, bench push workout, but today is front lever, basically. And um, I'm adding one more resistance band as well to make it a bit easier in intensity wise. And I'm also dropping the sets from three sets originally down to two sets. I think that's gonna be pretty perfect. First thing on the schedule is the front lever pull-ups. And it is a deload week, so it's gonna be eight reps, just like before, two sets. So that's a reduction by one set. And for the intensity, I've added a resistance band to make it easier. Front lever is definitely my, my strongest skill compared to Front lever and planche. This might be a little bit too much help. But at the same time, it, it is a deload, so the whole point of it is to be pretty damn easy. I'll do one more set with this one and might change to a small resistance band for the other ones. So it's, you know, some intensity but still deload. On to the second set. And since it is a lot of help, at least the form is gonna be perfect. That's gonna be the main focus here. I will stick with these resistance bands because it is a deload, but focusing on clean form, slow and controlled reps. If we're doing so, it's gonna be really beneficial. False grip. That feels good. Doing it slow and controlled, good for muscle connection and everything, so we gotta get a lot from this. We're moving pretty damn fast today since it's only two sets of each exercise, but that's pretty fun. Next up is the one on front lever, both arms, and uh, also here, eight seconds. I have a bit more help. I think the form is gonna be pretty damn good. Also put the camera, so if you're getting bored of me, you can always check out my friends doing rows in the background. That's more interesting. Still heavy. <laughs> oh. I think I must have put the, the ropes a bit lower than usual. I'm not laying on the floor even if it may look like that, but I'm touching it like constantly a little bit. So I'm gonna put these ones a bit higher before the next set. Since the boys are training without shirt, I have to take mine off too. Showing who's the alpha. And maybe to check a little form. Last one I started with this one. I was starting on the left arm. Ugh. Twisting so fast. Oof. Pretty solid form though. It's a bit more help than usual, but something that's good for connection. Just to get a perspective on how hard some things are, my body's gonna try out the one arm. Maybe finish it. It's pretty strong though. Oh. 
Solid. Nice. Actually pretty impressed. Or maybe I'm just weak as fuck, I don't know. It was the Victorian that was up next. Since we're having it off help, I'm gonna really try to get my chest up. Like the cleanest form is when you're here. A bit exaggerated, but thinking of being here, then you might drop here and that's still pretty good form. Worst thing is being here, so we're gonna skip that part. At two sets, minimum eight second holds. Pretty good. Nice form. Even though we're getting a lot of help, so that's what we're expecting. But this one feels really nice. I've also added it after freestyle sessions, so starting to feel like I'm getting way more connection in this exercise, which is good. Since we're training it, we're expecting some profit. The first set was pre pretty damn clean form, so I'm literally just gonna try to do the same for the second one. I'm trying to have locked arms the whole time. So I don't want to be bent, but fully locked, extend backwards. Oh, left there. Solid. Det är bra. Det är så med henne. Åh, nice. Chest up. Yes, listen to my vlogs. Up next is top front lever hold. Last week I had normal sessions. And I never really managed to hold the rings like towards the body. Like when I'm doing it on a bar, I, I press it against my, my stomach. I didn't manage to do it last time, but now since we gain more help, my goal is gonna be to throw out all the eight seconds, actually have the rings up against my body. Because then I know I'm you know, activating all those muscles. Because I'm, if I'm always training here, I'm never gonna get a really top front lever hold because that last part is, I'm never hitting those muscles, so to say. <laughs> Oof. I think I did it for at least the first six seconds. Then the two final seconds. Bit more shaky, losing contact with the bar, <laughs> with the rings. But I'm still pretty satisfied. Let me tell you something. Most people know, but we don't really do something with that knowledge. And that's when it comes to building routines. We all know that we should have, you know, healthy routines and everything. But then again, we, we don't really have healthy routines in general. It is extremely helpful. Helpful. When you start building your routines, your daily based life, and doing small things, not, not, not these, these huge stuff, but doing small things that in the long run is gonna add, like guarantee to, so to say, your progress, that's the key. So me personally, when it comes to food and everything, I, I don't count calories, I don't do stuff like that. But what I do is, every morning I have a fixed breakfast. So I always have my three eggs, I have my protein shake. And so every morning, morning when I wake up, I just do these things and I, sort of, I don't really think about what I'm eating, counting, stuff like that. I just know that, okay, I know this is enough protein, so that's check. And when it comes to training, I just pick my, my clothing in the morning, put them in a bag. I have them throughout the whole day in school and everything. And as soon as I'm done with school, I go directly to the gym. I never go home before going to the gym because that leads me to the point where I'm have, having to take the decision, should I go to the gym or not? No, I'm just, Every time, as soon as I'm done with the other things during the day, I go directly to the gym. And that eliminates the risk of me actually just staying home or doing something else. So I think that, that's really the key point, is just building these habits. 
and that's what I love about gym training or calisthenics is you can literally train whenever you don't really have to adapt to a specific time I actually used to be a swimmer back in the days did it for 11 years roughly and I, it was great but what I hated was the fixed time schedule like at 6 in the evening everyone should be here and we train for one hour and having those fixed times that sucked because then you always got home you could be home for like one and a half hour and then you were gonna go swimming so I, I like you couldn't plan anything and I, I don't know I, I really hated that so that's one of the reasons I quit because it, it just didn't work with the lifestyle I wanted to have building these routines making sure you actually do some things uh, that's gonna be the key point eliminating these factors of having to think like we don't want to think when we do stuff we just do it routine based and then all of a sudden we have results that's the key Ah, good one and the last one for today one thing in the ring is you might wondering why I have so much false grip to some degree it's a little bit of sheeting but when you do front level pull-ups or holds or top holds when you actually bend the wrist you sort of the you sort of get closer to the bar so the range of motion is a bit shorter and also I feel like when I do actually have false grip I have more connection. I don't know if it's just for me, but like I really prefer having false grip. It just connects the whole upper body and the arm, so that's why I've always been doing it. It requires some strength and it's a little bit painful in the beginning, but when you get used to it, it's, uh, it's really helpful. I got myself 30 kg for the pull-ups. Last time it was 40 kg and eight reps. Still gonna do the eight reps. Just a little bit less. However, I'm more towards the one rep max person. So for me, it's not necessarily the weight that makes the difference. Of course, it does some difference, but like I can do five reps pretty, pretty much with most weights. But as soon as I start to do like more reps, like let's say 20, 20 reps, I, I can't do much weight. Like I suck. Just at normal pull-ups without any weight, I'm really bad at. So my strength is high as fucking weight, but low reps. That's the way I go. So having more, more or less weight doesn't matter too much, but increasing the reps, it's gonna fuck me over. So we're sticking to eight reps. Fucking lost count. Ah. I think that eight, I think. But it's weird. Like that was just as heavy as 40, almost. And my one rep max, it's 75 kg in the pull-up grip. Or not not in the pull-up actually. I think 70 in the pull-up grip. 75 probably in chin-up. Strong in chin-up. Uh, but I might be wrong on those ones. It was a long time ago since I did one rep max, but that, that's my strong side. And when it comes to pull-ups pull training and stuff, I really want to increase my one rep max strength. I think that's a bit colder in my opinion, but also more fun to train. So I'm gonna stick with low reps and high weights. Let's do a bit more false grip. You see, I, these reps are just like when I did with 40 kg last week. It's really weird. Like the weights doesn't doesn't affect me as much. It's just it's just the reps. Oh, maybe I have to train more on these ones because it's probably my weakness. Now that was the final one for today. That is gonna be it for the workout part. But if you think we're done here, you're wrong. Today is actually the weekly ice bath. So I'm actually gonna meet up with the boys by the lake and have an ice bath. It's gonna be later tonight though, but I'm gonna bring you guys onto that as well. So I'll see you guys by the lake. Ciao, ciao. First up is just gonna check if we got some ice. Probably not, since 
we were here last week and it haven't been, I think, under minus. Well, fuck, I'm wrong, as always. But it doesn't seem to be that deep, so we're just gonna fix it and then get sauna ready. Then it's time for ice bath. <laughs> Not gonna lie, the best feeling is to stand still and just see people work extremely hard. <laughs> Slavery. I'm <laughs> Almost. Whoa. All right, fits perfect. Oh, now, next up, on. warm up the sauna and we are ready to go. It is time. I'm hoping my camera setup is gonna work because it is raining a lot. Or not a lot, but some rain. And we do not want to have it on the camera, so I put an umbrella on it. Woo! Ugh. Don't get me wrong, this is fucking cold. I'm just, you know, having the poker face playing that badass. But it is freezing every damn time. <sighs> Extremely relaxing though. Unless you have the boys <laughs> being boys. I didn't bring my phone, uh, so I can't record the time uh, due to the rain. Uh, but I'm just gonna sit it for a while. Sometimes you just do it for as long as you feel like. But the maximum record I've had, it was with um, Daniel Fleerfil. He's also a lot into ice bath. And we usually listen to Wim Hof. He's got a lot of experience with this, so to say. And uh, we also do some breathing sessions before. Not necessarily like hyperventilation, if that's what it's called. Uh, but you breathe a lot, get a lot of oxygen in the body. It helps, it's helpful as well. Uh, so I get relaxed. And then afterwards, especially if you sit for like 15 minutes, your body's getting cold down to the bones. So you need to do a lot of warm up. And I mean like movement. We're standing, doing like weird noises just to warm up the whole body. Uh, and that's outside actually. You don't, you don't want to do it in the sauna directly. So it becomes like a shock. So we do it inside when it's decent warmth. Uh, but then, of course, into the sauna as well, warm up. <laughs> I don't know how much time it's passed, probably like two minutes, maybe. It's crazy, like a few years ago when I did this the first time, actually just two years ago, uh, I, I was a weak ass bitch. I jumped in, pretty much flew out twice the speed, and I uh, thought it was super cold. And like nothing really changed. It's not like my body gets super used to it. The only thing that changed was my uh, my beliefs that it's not harmful at all when I first first did it for a long time. I think it was three minutes uh, That really changed like the perspective Then of course the next time it was still really cold to go into the water But at that point I know that I mean my body's capable of three minutes So being here just for like ten seconds so to say it's it shouldn't be that hard And now when I've done it for 15 or at least 10 minutes, that's pretty often if we sit for a long time you know, just taking a bath becomes a piece of cake. And uh, the only thing that changed was the mindset to, you know, how we actually see the ice bath. Now I see it more as a relaxing place than just a place where my body goes into shock. Uh, that's the only difference. Oof. But I think I am done now. I don't know how long that was. Maybe around three minutes, I would guess. And it went pretty good. Even though I have my, my boys here doing doing weird stuff and I think my setup actually worked with the camera and the umbrella but I think that's gonna be it for today I hope you enjoyed the workout and the ice bath as well the ice is probably gonna be here for at least a few more weeks so definitely more ice baths to come and um, hopefully it's not raining next time I can bring my timer maybe sit for a little longer and um, I think that can be pretty good I will see you guys in the next one Ciao, ciao.